So uh, we are having our last session today. So uh, we have uh, Uli, uh, who is uh, the chief architect at CARE and advisor at Vivo Medical Group. So we are talking more from the healthcare perspective. Okay, uh, so uh, hello, Uli. Hello, nice to Hi, meet you. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you uh, good and sign, uh, loud and clear. Fan so fantastic. can you try to share the screen? Uh, okay, can yes. see that. Maybe you can and put it uh, in the full screen. Uh, you can, uh, I can see, still see the windows. Can you make it as a full screen? Uh, no, this, uh, I'm actually sharing an individual window and that's, uh, I guess uh, it's okay this way because I'm not sharing, I'm not sharing the full screen. Oh, oh uh, okay, okay. So try, try our best here. Okay, so maybe yeah. I pass the time to you. So uh, thanks for for your support. Okay, see, see you soon. And thanks, thanks for saving the best session for last. All right. Um, yeah, let's start. Um, thanks, Patrick. Thank, thanks, Ethan. Thanks for the whole team. Um, I've spoken at API days a couple of times already over the last few years. Um, and I'll show you in a moment where you can see some of my previous talks. Um, I would I would love to be in Hong Kong right now. It would be uh, uh, a totally different experience. Um, I do think everybody who's watching will will agree that the platform that we have is is actually quite advanced. Uh, but of course, nothing nothing beats face to face. And I think we all want to be able to get back to this. And um, what I want to talk to uh, today to you about is well. APIs, yes. Healthcare, yes. It's also quite a personal story for me because uh, I think I've spent the last, at least uh, the last decade working for software vendors and providers uh, where you work with customers and you, you, you talk to them about APIs and about cloud and digital transformation. And since uh, beginning of this year, uh, I switched sides. And um, well, I can, I can also share with you personally how that looks like from the other side. Uh, because it's it's a whole different world out there, so I want to cover this as well. But um, back to what I said at the beginning, right? Um, imagine, imagine it's it's 2022. Uh, if you look at the calendar, that's not very far away. And and imagine we are doing API Days Hong Kong in April. Uh, let's not. Well, it's it's in my talk. It's not possible to say uh, let's not talk about viruses, but. Uh, um, chances are this is going to accompany us for a while and then we have to figure out how do we live with the situation instead of hoping that everything magically disappears overnight and i can tell you and that's the exciting part and that's why i made that huge switch from being an api evangelist uh, a customer uh, well in a, in a technical sales capacity um, to actually use that knowledge uh, for, for, for something that's really hurting the world at the moment and um, the great thing is if you are dialing in from Hong Kong, from Singapore, there is a good chance you will recognize that, that brand on the, on the lower right. And uh, if you are traveling um, to Hong Kong, to Singapore, you will probably do at least one of the tests with that uh, institution that, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm affiliated with. So imagine it's, it's, it's 2022 and we are lucky to be doing API days again in a in a face to face fashion. There is a good chance that you will be using our app for this is not something that is a, a mock up. This app exists. This app uh, does a lot of things for for patients, for users already. Um, you can you can uh, video call a doctor, get a prescription delivered to your house, get um, a, a medical certificate that you are not able to come to work today without leaving the house. You can make an appointment to visit a specialist. You can get a queue number. <laughs> Ultimately, obviously, it's about COVID vaccinations and, and tests as well. So, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. But ultimately, the idea is if you are traveling to Hong Kong, if you're traveling to Singapore, uh, you'll be uh, uh, seeing our logo at some point and uh, you'll be doing tests and the app potentially will follow you around the event uh, when that happens next year. Um, I'll say a few more things about myself and about the company, obviously, in a moment, but let's j jump right into this. So this is something that we have working at the moment. So even me as being staff, you know, when you work in a hospital, you, you get swab tests every, every two weeks or so on. So we are actually using our own app. So in, in, in this case, you, you can book the test through the app where you can redeem a code or you can 
book a test for travel or for general testing, you can say what kind of test you want. You, you choose the clinic that you want to uh, do that thing on. We have a, a Raffles Medical in, in Changi Airport in Singapore. We have one in, in uh, Hong Kong Airport as well. You choose from some of the available slots. If I go to the next screen, uh, you can see that uh, you are adding your personal information. Um, make a payment. There is an increasing set of payment options available and you, re you receive a QR code. And with this one, you can walk into the clinic, scan the QR code, then the test uh, is being performed. And uh, a couple of hours later, you will receive a push notification on your phone. Um, and, and hopefully, you'll see the same result as, as uh, that I show you here on the screen. And ultimately, you get a certificate that uh, in, in whichever form allows you to participate at the event or to travel, uh, whatever uh, your needs may be. It's needless to say, since it's 2022, there is APIs everywhere, right? So it's all kinds of different systems who are talking with each other. And, and that's exactly the topic that I'm looking to dive into. Yeah, let me, let me pause again to say uh, this, is, this is all, uh, even after all these years of doing events uh, online, this is where you wished you could involve the audience, that you could, you know, see question marks in people's faces or have interruptions where they say, hang on, how does it look like if I do this? Online is not the same, right? So uh, I do, I do uh, invite you to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. So, so you see here, these are my social handles. Um, I'm quite active on GitHub. In fact, you know, I'm, you can see here that I'm teaching at National University of Singapore as well. And I invited a recruiter a couple of weeks ago to speak <coughs> with my students in class. And he basically discovered me over, over, over GitHub to say, uh, you are doing uh, more than a million uh, commits every, every year. You must be quite some automation guy. Let's talk. And, right, so this is uh, a, pla a platform that I'm very active on. LinkedIn, I think my world would not be the same without LinkedIn. And uh, yes, my, my uh, primary um, role at the moment is I'm the chief architect at CARE, which is, it depends on how you look at it. It's a startup and it's not a startup. Right, so we are uh, primarily based in Singapore. We also have people uh, in, in other parts of uh, Asia Pacific and most uh, dominantly in Vietnam. We are hiring smart people. We are hiring engineers. If you are interested, do get in touch. We are a pure digital and cloud and API company. And yeah, we are very, very close with uh, the Raffles Medical Group. In, in fact, we are sharing the same office in Singapore. And uh, yeah, uh, this is a very fruitful co collaboration. And I'll tell you more about that company at a, at a later point in the session. If you look, if you look at the slides on the, on the right side, you'll see not just some interesting logos, but these are some of the, the, the previous steps in my career. In fact, I've, I've not... Uh, um, added my most recent one, which you will see on my LinkedIn, uh, which will probably tell you that I've done quite some API work in the last couple of years. But that was exactly my topic, right? So I've, I've done quite some work uh, with software vendors, uh, where you work with customers, where you, uh, yeah, hope, hope that they will uh, be adopting your solution. You aim to become a trusted advisor. And this is the, the big step that I made beginning of this year to yeah, to say let's let's build something real. Um, when I when I do a talk at an event, I always enjoy when people take uh, photographs of my slides. I can tell you if you go to apigeek.net, you will find the slides that you're looking at right now, uh, including including some of the slides from my previous gigs, and you also see a couple of open source projects that I'm running. And I can tell you, it will always be good to have people who participate and, and contribute so it's not a single person running the show. And especially for the open banking uh, projects that I've done, uh, that definitely needs someone else at the moment who, who can take over. That's not me. But yeah, so shortly after I joined, we were talking about building a platform, right? building a data exchange, person health records, medical payments, wallets, and so on. So we 
talked about building a platform. And soon after I joined, I realized, oh wow, it's, we're actually talking about how do we architect a company around this. And pretty, pretty soon after that, um, I discovered, yeah, we, we need to build up a whole ecosystem, right? It's because that's, that's the critical point that keeps uh, this thing going. Um, I can tell you, leaving the vendor side, um, moving to an end user is a huge change, not just on the work front, uh, the way how we structure our day and what we build. Um, I can tell you uh, from, a, from a pure availability perspective, when, when I was uh, in, in my previous job, I run webinars and events, and it was always so difficult to get customers joining these events and those webinars. And I, at some point, I couldn't understand this. They were so interesting. I, I took the extra mile to have to have people in that in that show, um, and it would be so difficult to to make sure customers can attend. Now, on the other side, I realize how how stressful a day is at work, and. Um, that means my LinkedIn also looks very different than before. I was posting almost every day, and now I get to look at this on over the weekend. I, I don't even want to talk to you about my email. Um, we use messaging at work, right? And uh, email is mostly for external uh, people, and I check it maybe once a day. And, and it's become, when the inbox is full, it, it becomes tough to reply to emails in real time. So that's, that's one part. And the other side is, pretty, pretty soon, and that's where we are uh, talking about APIs, where we're talking about uh, the challenges that I, that I see. Well, in this, in this current situation, the, which we are in since quite some time, you, you realize everybody needs to integrate with each other. Right? It's, no longer, it's no longer between you know, the, the, the hospital and the insurer alone. Suddenly, everybody has data, everybody needs stuff from each other and, and how can that be done and uh, right uh, and you realize that that uh, certain things just can't be solved the old way I'll, I'll come to some of these conclusions in a moment but this is something I'm facing on, on a daily basis right that we have airlines and airports and government agencies people who want to run events people who have hospitals and insurers and employers and everybody sits on certain pieces of data and, and how how can we in a very fast, in a very consistent, and obviously in a very secure way, make sure that uh, while the data is open, at the same time it's secure and that it's consistent. That's that's the huge challenge that uh, this is this is about, right? So a couple of observations. I've already mentioned that, right? So things are quite fragmented. Things are quite archaic as well. Um, you may have seen the, the, the excellent talk from Alan Glickenhaus earlier today at the event where he speaks about the various integration patterns from right, CSV files, XML, SOAP, um, well, APIs and now events. It's not that they are replacing each other. They are also not necessarily building on top of each other, but, uh, and he calls it back to the future because you know, we, we end up having a mix of all of these. Right? So there's, uh, we may have situations where the f from, a, from a consumption perspective we have classic, almost classic APIs by now, but in the back end, there could be, you know, all kinds of, uh, well, very dated systems that still do their job and, and still have their place, right? But it, it, it is like this, that we ha we, there is no much standardization. Everybody is, is, is looking at their own standards, well, to, to make things work. And pretty much in a situation that I just showed you, where everybody needs to integrate with each other, that is, that is causing issues, right? Uh, and to me personally, as someone who has been preaching and teaching about APIs for the longest time, um, yeah, I keep asking myself, and I realize this hands-on, when can you call an API an actual API? Right? So obviously, right, they all use HTTPS uh, protocols. They are all JSON uh, payloads. But yeah, are, they, are those APIs using the proper verbs? Okay, maybe this is not something I would arrest people on, right? So there is better ways to design certain things. And if I want to manipulate a resource, it should be a post uh, if, and so on. If I want to change it, it's put and so on. With this, I can live. But I think my, my critical point, and that's what I realized, right? Whatever the APIs are, wh wherever, whether they run on the mainframe or on a Raspberry Pi, I don't care so much. But 
if I can understand how the API works in 10 minutes, that's what I want, right? I don't need to look at uh, Word documents and call someone and even if I know what the parameters are, I, I need to find out what do they mean and, and what are the proper values and that. It would be nice to have a sandbox, but, but even that is, 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 you know, I'm okay with the PDF as long as I have this objective. Tell me in 10 minutes, uh, let me do a, a sandbox implementation that, that, that consumes the API and I don't need longer than 10 minutes to understand how it works. Give me the curl requests, give me the postman collection and so on. The, uh, the other parts of the observations are way be, maybe not API related, I just thought I mentioned them anyway. Um, the population is actually aging as we know, so we need to you know, uh, build solutions for this audience as well. But uh, so something I'm very passionate about is the patients are not owning their own data. Right? And that's, that's something I want to um, evaluate and work on as well, where we can, let's not talk about technology in, on, on that point, but where people can truly own the data and they can co have a consent-driven mechanism um, to share this with selected individuals or with uh, selected companies. Yeah, um, Lucky, and, and I hope you, s you see this slide well. Uh, lucky, uh, you see that the uh, uh, virus uh, set out to be an accelerant for, for human adoption, right? So in, I can t speak for Singapore, suddenly everybody knows what an API code, I'm sorry, everybody knows what a, what a QR code is or how to use them. And uh, that is because, you know, otherwise you can't even get into a shop anymore, right? So the situation actually helps to speed up the adoption rate for technology, but it's certainly not there where the uh, technology innovation rate is at. So the, uh, some of the things that I cooked up with over the last few years, they still stand, and I see, I see the confirmation every day. Designing for change, right? Things change on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. I can build a roadmap for the next year, yeah, happily. But uh, you just have to follow the news and uh, everything around variants and vaccinations and tests. That doesn't seem to end anytime soon. Right? So if anything, I could, I could lay out this map for the city that I'm building or I, I build a system that is actually made for change. Right? So it's, I start small, I, st I start building Lego pieces. I think you, you get the drift. This, this one I see on a, on a daily basis, that need. And the second one is that need to iterate very fast. This is, a, this is a slide that I use very often. So instead of, it is actually very, very related to the first one, but I think this one captures it very visually, that instead of building that car that takes two years to build, we, we are, we're starting with a trike, right? Uh, at some point we want to build a car, but along the way, six months in, we may realize, you know, that, that, that motorbike, that's exactly what we, re what we need right now. So it's obviously about sprints, about agile, methodologies, and c quite, quite honestly, it's about short uh, feedback and, and uh, uh, short feedback loops and to be able to react to changes very fast. Things will break, things change. So design processes, design communication cultures, communication tools, right? You've seen my Outlook screenshot. Outlook is, a, this is a hint, right? Outlook is probably not part of the solution or Gmail for that matter. Um, make sure you're able to uh, react to changes very, very fast. And yeah, the need for interoperability, where having APIs is great. Having well understood APIs, like the ones that I mentioned just now, uh, is even better. But the ideal would be, and you see here, I'm just mentioning this real briefly, when we speak about FHIR, the, uh, there is several reasons which we can't get into the details right now, why, why the adoption is a challenge uh, for several players and also for the industry. That's why we are not there yet. But I think us individually, as, as uh, companies, as providers, as payors, we, we can help uh, by, by looking at adoption and looking at contributing. And if it's as a first step, just experimenting with it and, and figuring out what we have to do in, in order to get there. So just very, very briefly, and I know this is overly simplified, right? When, I, when you keep in mind that, that mess that I showed you earlier where everybody needs to build very expensive 
badly documented point-to-point -point integrations which are difficult to maintain. I don't think our, our company uh, is able to change the whole world uh, and put everybody on that would actually be not, uh, not ideal. But if we can, for some of these solutions, build, build that data exchange in a secure way uh, where patients own their data and, and uh, providers, payors, insurance companies can, can dig into this uh, unified uh, message bus, let's just, this is a very technical term, then, th then this is where everybody wins. The um, strategic partnership with Raffles is, is a huge factor for us, right? So instead of just being a, a startup with a few people who build stuff in the cloud, we actually have uh, around 100 clinics uh, in the region. I think we've just opened a very nice shiny hospital in, in Shanghai. The one that you see on the left, Singapore, is where uh, uh, we are sitting. Uh, that's uh, if you are in town, if you are interested in a collaboration, if you want to figure out if, if there is a, an in interesting job for you in the engineering department, do reach out. It will be a, a pleasure to speak with you. Well, what I'm working on right now is actually to make some of these APIs that already exist consumable in, in, in exactly that way, right? That you have, and uh, you see I'm using Slate over here, which is the, uh, the, the open source uh, rendering engine where I can um, use Swagger definitions and uh, I can build markdown files and they render into, into nice consumable uh, websites. This, this is one of my, one of my projects at the moment. It's uh, not the most pressing one, but this is certainly something that I need to have in place fairly soon. And I need help, right, so do, do reach out if you have ideas. Um, and with this, we are, I, I'm looking at the clock. It's, it's just about um, time to wrap up. Your turn, right? I've mentioned this twice already. Get in touch if you are interested to collaborate. Connect on LinkedIn. And yeah, if, if anything, I do, I do think uh, things are going to get better. And uh, don't panic. We are on it. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, uh, thanks, Ori. So uh, I think uh, your talk is uh, having a very uh, uh, interesting angle. I think most of our audience is from the uh, financial service industry. So when they are hearing about the retail insurance or even healthcare, there should be quite some of some in, uh, in inspiration they can see. So mm -hmm. I, I just have uh, one uh, question here. So you mentioned about the, the fire. So I do, I do heard uh, of something uh, about that um, in other industry, and even including financial services. So maybe just uh, one quick uh, view from you. So uh, um, do you see uh, wh what is the main reason why this kind of um, the open uh, standard or data structure is having some difficulties to, to push forward? Because I, we, do, we do hear about fire locally as well, but uh, when they try to implement it, they, they see that uh, actually every one of their part uh, is not supporting. So it seems that they are the only one using it and then with additional efforts. So would like to see your quick view, maybe just one or two bullet, uh, how your view on the fire thing. Yeah. Well, um, well um, I, I think this is, this is also something we, we see in other areas such as logistics, yep. for example. I think yeah. the... You've, you've seen this in the slides just now when we talk about the adoption and sometimes it needs some of these, these trigger events that just where we realize we can't do it the way anymore, we've done it in the past, then this is the way things massively change. There needs to be, well, about fire specifically, I think there is a couple of um, organizational hurdles sometimes. It is quite a complex yep. standard. Uh, there is certain things to, well, the problem is, um, I, I was referring to Alan's talk as well, right? Things are, have kind of worked <laughs> in the past, and there is yep. a kind of very old school integrations that still do the job. Even to get to uh, HL7, to get to you know to, to simple APIs is a big change to some of to some of these companies. So mm. Fire would would add that other complexity, and and plus you know sometimes it's uh, um, unfortunately I need to say it. We need to talk about where is the incentive for doing that, and and uh, mm. you know that is sometimes you know so that there could be regulatory bodies that demand for that. There could be, you know, it could be yet another one of those uh, Silicon Valley companies who just say, you know what, uh, fine, I'm just grabbing the standard, and now everybody has to do it. If you want to use my devices, um, it's a mix of everything, and and ultimately I Go hope ahead. that some of the 
uh, providers will just step up and say, yes, fine, uh, we do see the need and we are going to be the first. And I do see a couple of initiatives in APAC mm -hmm. which are not uh, uh, for main stage presentations yet, but they are definitely in the making. So I'm optimistic that we can get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks for a quick view. I think, uh, as you said, uh, it is a very similar problem in different industry, uh, logistics, uh, maybe in finance, etc. So um, I think we, we hopefully lead more people to support those uh, initiatives and then make their community for works. Okay, so thanks, thanks for your sharing. And then uh, also uh, some good insights. Uh, so uh, thanks again, Ui. So, um, yeah, I, I, so I, 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 we are going to have to our final section talk about the closing remarks. So thanks for support. Thanks, thanks, Thank Patrick. you. See you Always soon. Always a pleasure.